fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Countless stories have been handed down from generation to generation concerning the stirring deeds of the mysterious masked rider of justice. Only Tonto, his faithful Indian companion, knew his identity. And now the thrilling frontier days of the western United States come to life once more. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're meeting Tonto in the town of Broken Bow. Hi, Silver! The town of Broken Bow grew up around the railroad station and a telegraph office. Frequently, a train pulled into a siding and stopped there overnight to wait for the train to pass in the opposite direction. On these occasions, the crew of the train would spend the night in Broken Bow's hotel. In the first scene of our Lone Ranger drama, we see Mike Murphy in the cafe, surrounded by a group of men. Mike is the engineer of the westbound train that has stopped for the night in Broken Bow. I'll be blasted if an Irishman ain't got the worst look of man or beast. What's bothering you, Mike? Ask Sam. He can tell you. <laughs> I ain't just sure, but something tells me Mike was sort of planning on seeing Betty tonight. But, Mike, ain't you pulling out with your train? You're handling a throttle on the westbound outfit, ain't you? They should go west when the eastbound is coming this way. Is that what's holding you here? You know as well as I do it is. Now, wouldn't it be a fine thing if I was to meet the eastbound on that single track of ours? I was forgetting that. It ain't that Mike gives a darn whether he stays over or not. It is he don't care as a usual thing. But he's got an idea Betty should have been here to help him pass the time. Sure, and that's what I think. As a matter of fact, Mike, when she left town to visit her friend, she didn't have no thought that you'd be in town tonight. I'll be talking it over with her. By the way, Mike, you ain't heard talk of Snake Lawford and his gang... Being around this country, have you? Ain't heard a word. Snake Lofgren? I don't know. One of my deputies had an idea. He'd seen one of that bunch of coyotes the other day. But maybe he's mistaken. He wasn't real sure. Well, here's hoping he didn't. It'd be a black day for us if he was to show up with that pack of hoodlums of his'n. Oh, probably just talk. Forget about it. How about filling up our glasses just once more? I feel like having another. Snake Lofgren never comes into a town these days unless he has a good reason, Tonto. Him here now. And there must be a reason. He's wanted by too many lawmen to risk being seen in town unless he has some pretty important plans. Mm, that's right. Is he still back at the cafe? Uh, him still there. Other feller with him. Probably waiting to speak to someone inside. Uh, but he doesn't dare be seen. That's right. I'd like to capture Snake and turn him over to the law right here in town. Why, why not do it? We can do that any time. Let's wait and see what he's planning here. Oh, oh. Susanna, there comes Fuller. Oh, the engineer of that train on the siding. Oh. Good night, gents. Thanks for a darn swell evening. Oh, there he goes, probably to a hotel. Oh. Look, there. Snake. Him follow, other feller. Very well. We'll follow Snake and see what happens. I'll be ready to act if Snake tries any violence. Yeah. 
Snake Lofgren and his companion, Mears, the Lone Ranger rode to the small cottage where Jim Calkins lived with his daughter, Betty. There he brought Silver to a halt. There was no light inside, but a rap on the door brought a quick response. Have you come back, Betty? No, Calkins. I want to speak to you about your daughter. Open the door. Who are you? A friend. Open this door. Just a second now. I'll have it open in a jiffy. There. Now, what's the matter? What do you want here at this hour of the night? Where is your daughter? She's here. I don't know you. And I don't see why I should tell you where Betty is. You've got a heap of nerve coming here. I'll step inside. No, you see here. Listen to me, Calkins, and try to keep your head. When did your daughter leave to visit friends at Grantsville? Around noontime. Why? How did she travel? On her horse. Did those friends expect her? No. And you don't know whether or not she got there safely? No. Is there something wrong? Calkins, I'm afraid there is. Tell me. You're the telegraph operator on that line. Why would anyone want to stop the train that's coming from the west tomorrow morning? What about the train? That's what I'm asking you. Suppose you light a lamp so we can see each other. Yeah, sure thing. I got a lamp right here handy. Now, just a minute. I'll get it going. 
there's something mighty queer afoot, and I aim to find out what it is. If something has happened to Betty... There. Now, sit down. Your mask! What's this mean? Who are you? I told you I was a friend. Right now, I'm afraid you'll have to be ready to hear some unpleasant news. What's happened to Betty? Tell me. Tell me what's happened. I'm quite sure she's safe and unharmed so far. But I think she might be in danger of her life. What? Unless we can do something between now and daybreak. Tell me what you know about her. First, tell me what there is of value on the eastbound train. I, I can't tell. I can't tell no one. Someone already knows. How? I don't know how, but Lofkin and his gang have captured your daughter. They're holding her so they can force Mike Murphy to stop the engine west before the eastbound train comes by. But well, that'd mean a wreck. It would. And Betty, where is she at? What have they done with her? Tell me what's on board that train. Gold. A fortune in gold. It's bullion going east from the Gold Coast. And that's why those killers want the trains to crash. Now, what about Betty? Hawkins, keep your wits about you. You've got to keep as calm as possible. The life of your daughter may depend upon your clear thinking. But something has got to be done. We can't just sit here. I've Wait. got to... If Betty hasn't been harmed so far, she'll be safe until morning. I have a friend who'll come here soon, and he may have a lot more to tell us. Meanwhile, you can tell me who might have known that Betty planned to ride to Grantsville. I don't know. I would be able to tell the outlaws that there was gold on that eastbound train. I don't know who'd tell that. I don't know how there could be any such leak. It was confidential. Think, Hawkins. Think hard. It may save Betty's life. Question Calkins, the telegraph operator. Snake and Mir joined their outlaw friends at their camp in the forest. They tied Murphy securely to a tree. Then Snake removed something from his saddlebag and showed it to the engineer. Now then, Mike, take a look at this and tell me if you recognize it. Fancy ribbon. There ain't but one hunk like that in the state. So you know it, huh? I fetched that from St. Louis. Uh-huh. And give it to Betty Calkins, didn't you? Yes. Then how do you reckon we got it if we didn't capture the girl? You dirty rat, you! Oh, may the devil take you for what you done. <laughs> Ain't no use straining again them ropes, Murphy. You won't bust them. Now maybe you want a little more proof before you're convinced. Hey, you! Fetch that horse here. Come on, Snake. I don't know if you know the girl's horse or not, but this is it. Where is she? Murphy, there ain't but one way for you to ever see the girl alive. That's to do what we told you. Kill me fireman and a couple of the lads that's on me train. And kill the crew of the eastbound. Let the crooks like you get away with whatever's aboard the train. Double cross me. Or oh, say your sweetheart dead. I don't know as it'll take me long to decide. You can jump from the train. We'll all ride along with you. And as far as I'm concerned, you can stop your train. Just so long as it's left on the tracks right near the turn. Now, you ain't got but a few hours to make up your mind, so you better do some thinking. And even if you don't do what we want, we'll likely get what we're after. We'll find out how to run that engine for our own selves. Maybe we could torture him a little. Keep back. I'm handling this. All right. We got the cover. What's going on over there? You What's the boys outside the camp got? Found someone there. Uh, go on there, engine. Lake, I want to talk with you. Where'd you get the red skin? Where'd he come from? He was over there in the dark. Listening to all we said. Oh, so you figured a spy on us, huh? You not go through a scheme. Where you from? Me not talk. Time to that tree. See if there's any other stupors around here. All right. I'll handle these fellas. I got good ways of handling red skin. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
And now to continue our story. The Snake Lofgren gang made Mike Murphy, the engineer of the westbound train, a prisoner. Then offered him a choice between the death of the girl he loved and the wrecking of the eastbound train. Tonto, who had followed the outlaws to their camp, was discovered and captured. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger had gone to the home of the girl's father, Sam Calkins, the telegraph operator, where he waited for Tonto's return. He should have been here long before this, unless... Where is he? If he's coming here, why don't he come? We don't know how far he had to go to reach Snake's camp. But time is passing. Another couple of hours and it'll be too late. Wait. It's Tonto's horse. Where's the man who went to the outlaw's camp? I don't know. Steady there, white fellow. Here's Silver. But I'm going to find out. All right, white fellow. Show us the way. But wait. What about my daughter? What about Betty? First, we must find Tonto. Get up, white fellow. Follow him, Silver. Come on, boy. Hi, old Silver. Tonto's horse led the way to the forest while the Lone Ranger followed cautiously. He knew that the appearance of Whitefellow without his master meant that Tonto had been injured or captured. In the outlaw's camp, Tonto was stolidly facing Snake Lofgren. Now, Mears, hand me that bullwhip. Here you are, Snake. Injun, you gonna tell me what you was here for and who you're reporting to? Or have the living daylights beat out of you? Me not talk. No? We'll see about that. Maybe we better go over and shut the engineer's mouth, huh, Snake? Yeah, maybe we had. After we open the engines. Mike can't hear us way over here. Go on, boss. Use the whip on the engine. What are you grinning about? Uh, uh, uh. You not hit me. No? Snake, what's he so doggone amused about? He's looking over there at Mike Murphy. Hey, look there. Who's that? Captain Silver. Captain Silver. Hey, look over there. You two, look out. Silver, closely followed by Whitefellow, charged into the outlaws like a furious demon. The Lone Ranger, using his guns as clubs, fought his way to Tonto's side. Then, whipping out a knife, he slashed the ropes that bound his friend. Get on your horse, Tonto. Help me. Be ready. What about my feller? Leave him here. Don't let him get loose. Get away, boy. This way, Tonto. We're clear of them now. Uh, we see you talk to Mike Murphy. Another side of camp. Here, Tonto. I told him what to do. Be afraid. Outlaw. Kill him, girl. That's what I want to check on. Tonto. Did you learn anything while you were with them? Them fellers got girls' horns. Yes? Got fancy ribbons. And Mike's convinced they have the girl a captive? Mm, that's right. And now we can slow down. Uh, Tonto, I have an idea that I want to test. What's that? I spent a long time with Jim Calkins. There's no way those outlaws could know about the gold. But them know? Yes. And the railroad men are the only ones who could have told them. Uh, the outlaws even know just where the eastbound train will be at a given time. Uh, what we do? We're hunt for girl. She wasn't in the camp, was she? No, we're not there. I told Mike Murphy just what to do. I think he trusted me. What? What him do? He's going to accept the outlaw's terms and agree to take the westbound train out in the morning at six o'clock. Him make wreck? No, Tonto. I don't think there'll be any wreck. If I can prove just one point, we'll be able to send the lawman to capture the Lofgren gang. What that point? You'll learn all about it very soon. Come on, Silver! The outlaws scattered and searched desperately for the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Meanwhile, the eastbound train thundered on. As the discouraged outlaws returned to their camp, Snake Lofgren spoke to them angrily. What sort of gunman are you, anyhow? We done all we could, Snake. You didn't get either of them two. It ain't our fault. We sure scoured the woods. I don't know how in heck them two could get away so fast. We kept after them for a time. We didn't have a chance of catching up to them. It don't matter much, though, does it, Snake? What do you mean? Why, 
Well, they didn't get to learn nothing important. The engine knows we're going to stop that eastbound train, don't he? What can he do about it? That remains to be seen. Mears, I'm done with fooling around. Fetch me the lash. I'll try it on the engineer. Ain't he made his mind up yet? No. Here's the whip snake. Good. There. How do you like the sound of that, Murphy? Flashing me won't help. It's getting close to time for you to take that train out. Are you going to do it or not? Where is me girl? You won't find her till you do what I want. Are you going to do it or ain't you? The girl's life depended on me. Seems like you have no choice left. When you take a train out? What else is there for me to do? Good. I thought you'd come around to my way of thinking. But you'd better be taking the ropes off me hands or I won't be able to handle no throttle. How long will it take to get the steam up and get the train ready to move? What time is it now? Around five. You could better be starting right away. I'll have to get me fireman. Oh, no, you don't. Me and Mears will go along to feed the boilers. Sure, but I don't need only one of you. Mears will be the one. I'll keep a gun on you so you don't try no tricks. You don't take no chances, do you, snake face? Cut his ropes. Three of you keep guns leveled on him. I ain't gonna have nothing go wrong at the last minute. I'm watching him. When will I get to see me girl? After the wreck, when you come back here. I'd be willing to give odds that you double-cross me when I do what you want. Only there ain't no choice for me. I can tell that the likes of you won't leave Betty alive if I don't do what you say. Come on. We'll head for the side where the train is. Bring your horses and everything you own. You won't be needing the kids. Sometime later, the heavy westbound train was ready to move. Switches had been thrown to clear the track, and Mears shoveled coal into the firebox. The engineer held a steady hand on the throttle, while Snake stood close beside him. All right, get going now. Sure, and that's what I'm doing. Go on, Mears, keep feeding that fire. Faster. I want to be as far west as possible when we meet the other one. Get to that bend if you can. That crook ain't so good at shoveling. We don't keep in a fire there. We can't go very fast. Don't bluff me. I ain't. We'll do the best we can. Shovel harder, Mears. Open up that throttle, Murphy. Remember, the girl ain't safe yet. The train went roaring westward toward the approaching eastbound train. In the meantime, the Lone Ranger raced over to Sam Calkins' home, leaped to the ground, and burst through the door. Calkins! Calkins! Where is she? Where's Betty? Have you found her? No, but Mike is taking the train west. What? Come with me. There's just one chance in the world to prevent that crash. We can't stop the it. The telegraph. But... Come on, it's not part of the station. You can wire the western point and have the eastbound train stopped. But there wouldn't be a chance to stop it. It'll be too late. Come, you'll ride my horse with me. Hey, stop dragging me. Get up over there. All right. All right. But I tell you... Come on, Silver. There isn't a chance of stopping that train now. Don't you even want to try? Yeah, sure. But Betty, my daughter. Come on, Silver. Not so fast. Here we are. Now get into that office and contact the western operator. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, boy. I tell you, there ain't no use. Inside. There's your key. Use it. But I... Hawkins. All right, stranger. I'll... I'll try and reach him. Ask if the eastbound train has passed that point yet. That's what I'm doing. I'll go outside and tighten the cinch on my saddle. Call me when you get your answer. All right. All right, stranger. Now, well, Silver, we'll see if we were right in what we figured. I hope he doesn't keep us here too long. Tyler will have a hard ride as it is. Hey, mister. Did you get an answer? Yeah. The train's already passed that station. There ain't no way to stop You it. crook. Well... What's the matter? What do you mean? You mean to say you had a message from the West? Yeah, sure. Oh, look at your wires. They've been cut. What? No message could go to the West or come from there. Calkins, you don't want that train saved. It's a frame-up. It's a rotten scheme that you're working with the Lofkin gang. You took advantage of your friend Mike Murphy's love for your daughter. You're the one who told Lofkin about that gold. You're the one who planned the whole thing. No. No, wait. Listen. And you know where your daughter is. Tell me. Let go of me. Talk. Where's Betty? Stop shaking me. Where is she? At, at Grantsville. I gave their mothers her horse. 
<laughs> she rid another horse. Let me go. Yeah. I suspected you when we talked last night. And Mike Murphy, he'll prove you a crook. Yep. Yeah. If you're here when the law comes, you'll get what Lofkin and his gang will get. hi Riding like the wind, the masked man reached the top of a hill where brushwood was piled and waiting. He set the fuel on fire and clouds of smoke billowed to the sky. Far to the west, Tonto, waiting for the signal, saw the pillar of smoke. That signal, white fella. Now we ride. Get him up, white fella. Get him up. Tonto had already brought a group of lawmen to the scene. A few quick words and the hard-riding men led by Tonto sent their mounts thundering along the rails. Meanwhile, in the cab of the engine, Snake was urging Mike to put on more speed. I tell you, Snake Face, this is the best we can do. That critter don't keep enough steam up. Shovel harder, Mears. Shovel harder. You shovel for a time. I'm all in. I got to keep this critter covered. We got to make more speed than this. What's that coming after? It's the same speed phrase. That engine. Oh, 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 oh. Lawman! No, you sparky! Get going faster! Not on your chin pipe! We're stopping here! Get going or I shoot! Oh, you put you in there, Sheriff! Wait, wait, I surrender! You, you are all right? You bet I'm all right, Indian. What about the girl? Her safe. Last friend send message. Girl's father in scheme. Yes? Yeah? The engine explained everything to me, my face. The girl is safe. So you can put the engine in reverse and get back to the side. Uh, that I will. Pile aboard. Put your horses in the second car, and then we'll show these spalpeens that this engine can go a lot faster in reverse than she's done heading west. Come on there, silver old fellow. Don't show those great legs of yours. Tunnel's waiting. We'll have to ride again. I know. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> 